Okay, uh, welcome to this kind of info lecture. Um, this is to do with my jewellery design class that I'm teaching, where I'm teaching how to do jewellery like this. Just one example of many. But I've been asked a few questions by students, um, some of them simple and some of them a bit harder to answer. So I'm going to run through them and answer these questions. So. Um, what Rick has put down here is what is the purpose of rendering and how will it serve to help market a given piece so um, for marketing well, like for instance like if I'm doing this ring and I'm getting this printed out into uh, well just printed in general or printed into precious metal like um, gold platinum or silver it's going to cost me a lot of money and I might not go with it and also my clients might not want this so in the case of rendering if I was to render this uh, as a market idea I would be putting this up here as a concept of my work so if a client comes around and says okay I'd like that I'd like that actually to be to be produced then he's seen something to use you know so rendering is vitally important I mean lots of things are rendered I mean if you look at lots of the adverts on television like for instance one Dyson lots of their animation sequences and stuff are all done in 3d they're all rendered out because um, well one they can't do those sort of things or it would be massive to do it with the actual thing that's the whole reason of um, special effects it's just what it is so to actually produce these out and make them look fairly realistic in a program like um, Keyshot then um, it's obviously going to help because you can produce those out and um, if a client likes and wants to buy them then you can have them produced of course you know it needs to be clear that it's a 3d render and uh, when you do get them produced then I obviously I suggest that they're photographed and they're put alongside the 3d visuals as well as showing as actual examples of what you've printed out but it can be a really good way if you've got a hundred rings and or a thousand rings and you're gonna actually pay to have those all produced in silver it's gonna cost you a fortune so if you put up one's examples of your work and then clients come along especially if it's a custom job because um, you haven't got anything so they've got an example and if it's a custom job you can actually do a uh, render of how the job is going and whether they want to make any alterations so the purpose of rendering is vitally important in especially in concepting or going forward into market or even into market itself it's a massive thing so that answers that question so the next question along a similar line is can we really take the take the place of making the piece and then photographing it well no <laughs> in the quick answer because when you do get it um, produced it might not be because it might not because it's cast and stuff it might not be exactly the same you might not have captured all the details so no it doesn't take the place of the real item but you make it clear that it's a that it's a render you know that it's a concept so that should answer that as well um, you ask what methods are there to render for rendering well there's there's t absolutely hundreds like I've shown you in there obviously this course is about ZBrush so I don't want to break off and show you oh, oh you know you're doing it in Keyshot you're doing it in Arnold you know doing it in Mental Ray uh, there's just a ton of different ways to produce stuff out Marmoset Unity they've all got rendering programs in them that you could use so um, there's a ton of methods so it's impossible to answer that the ones I've shown in the course of course is producing from ZBrush and also how to produce it from Keyshot uh, I only chose Keyshot there because Keyshot is integrated with Keyshot Bridge into ZBrush I wasn't about to go in and show you how to render it all out in Maya and Arnold because I'll be using a completely different program and most of you probably haven't got it I have done courses on rendering out they are just um, based on rendering out in those applications and um, the methods I show to render out in those applications are applicable to this as well as far as the methods are concerned um, the usual workflow um, in the profession professionally is to actually render out passes so you'll have different passes like a reflection diffuse all the different passes ambient ambient occlusions shadow passes and then you'll take a compositing program 
and you will put those back together again okay now this might not be one image if you're doing an animation it could be um, hundreds or thousands of images which you're then putting back together in a compositing program maybe after effects or something like that and you're putting them together there so that's the methods normally you would work in layer passes layer passes also give you control over each element such as reflection shadow ambient occlusion the diffuse and you can because they're in different layers or different images put on top of each other it's easy for you to go in and manipulate each section of it as opposed to printing out just a flat image that you would then have to spend a lot of try time trying to separate all of those passes out so if you can do it all in one go such as you can from zbrush or keyshot or Maya or any of the programs then that is the way you go right you've asked if um, if rendering can be done out of zbrush well yeah um, if I did a render here I've shown you render passes because that's the way that you should work but if I did a render of this ring here and I hit that render button it would render and if I just wanted to export the flat image out um, that's really easy because I'll just wait for it to finish that's pretend that's my render I could just go up to document and I could just export and I could just export that image um, as a JPEG if you haven't got access to anything else on my desktop you can save that and then you it actually opens up an export image where you can then play around with all this stuff you could adjust the contrast in here if you wanted to uh, change this around you could crop it and then you can click OK and it saved it as a flat image straight from ZBrush so yes you can also when you do your render passes you're going to notice that in your render um, pass settings yeah you've got a composite and that is also an image that you could use so you could just click on that and save that out again as a JPEG PNG bitmap TIFF and you could save that out as well so yes you can save directly out of ZBrush as an image without any passes so what you see is what you get will be sent out to from ZBrush however I don't advise that I advise you to learn how to work with layer passes so you've asked uh, again um, why using Photoshop well photo Photoshop is just a program that allows me to take those layer passes and put them and manipulate them that's why I use Photoshop Okay, Photoshop's an industry standard. There's lots of other image editing programs you could use that might do the same job, but I work with Photoshop. Um, what is accomplished by using Photoshop? Well, as I mentioned, being able to control everything. Why use Keyshot? Keyshot's just bespoke for uh, rendering. It gives you much higher quality real world lighting and material effects and it produces lovely sets of layers for you to work with that's why I choose Keyshot you could use any other program that you're familiar with but as I've mentioned before ZBrush and Keyshot work really well together and that's why I've used Keyshot and it gives excellent results as com in comparison to producing uh, renders from ZBrush which is ZBrush is not you know it's, it does render out but it's not um, designed for that well it is but it, it isn't it's more designed for sculpting and actually doing those sort of things so you've asked the question why um, does does Keyshot work along with ZBrush and Photoshop well yeah as I've mentioned ZBrush and Keyshot are go hand in hand layer passes that are produced you can work with those in Photoshop so the answer is yes uh, you've asked are are there advantages to using an external program much greater than doing everything inside ZBrush yes because you have control it's to do a job you know if you if there's an easier way of doing a job or a more accurate way of doing a job using a different application then you're going to use that if it's going to give you better results you're going to do that if it's going to save you time you're going to do that so of course you know I'm always looking at new programs seeing if that particular program helps me or doesn't help me and um, and I'll change my workflow accordingly I'm not going to be stuck just using one application and uh, limit myself uh, especially if you're trying to work um, for client timescales and um, 
you know you just you just need to be on top of your game with applications that are coming out right you've also asked for and um, last part is um, so I need to go into each scenario all the information is there already but at least my understanding it would help if you lay out a game plan first to help decide which method is best for any given project well what you're asking there really is a teacher style thing this is the way I teach I teach um, going along learning and going off at slight angles showing you different methods as I go I do not like to teach in a linear ma manner I think it's totally wrong to just plan your course out and go 1 to 10 um, because you're just going to think that's the only way of doing it so the whole reason this jewelry class has got le lectures or sections 1 to 6 was for you to look at every different thing that you can do in small digestible chunks because then it's up to you as the individual artist to choose the method that works for you and that's why I'm showing these project files afterwards to show you that I might use this, I might use that. And when I do use those methods, I usually explain why I'm doing it. So I think that's a teacher style thing. Sorry, I'm not changing the way I teach. Um, this is the way I think that people should learn. Um, I really hate linear workflows um, that are set up because it doesn't tell you all the options and you will have more problems with those courses for sure yeah you've put um, in the course as well there's lots of rechecks um, some parts are hard to follow yeah well again you know I do this stuff live I don't I don't um, script it all out and the main reason I do this is because I I actually like mistakes to happen because more often than not you're going to have those mistakes and you're going to know how to problem solve and that's a really big part of ZBrush now obviously Rick you know if you if you're getting annoyed and you don't like and you're not being able to follow my courses then you know it's your prerogative not to take them but this is the way that I work so that's the way it is So again, you know, Rick, it's really good you're giving me these comments, um, definitely. And I'm going to post this video on the Facebook group for other people to um, have their say about it as well. Because, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to change or I'm not going to do this. I'm quite happy to if a majority of you are saying do this, cut that out, make it more more scheduled. But what will happen is that you're, you know, I, I'm just afraid that if I do something where it's kind of scripted and I'm not putting any errors that happen and it happens to everybody has um, mistakes that happen as you're working or things don't work out and I think it's such a big big part of ZBrush is actually understanding and being able to work out and troubleshoot problems and if I just script it and I go nicely along creating a ring all nice and smooth and I get to the end of it and then you go and do it and you have a load of problems you know like asking me a question every single hour because um, you've had something go wrong this has gone wrong that's gone wrong then it's gonna be a nightmare for you so I think this covers it quite well but um, I might be wrong and that's why I'm gonna post it on the Facebook group for other people to have their say all right Rick I think I've answered all your questions now spent about 15 minutes on this so um, there you go